did a lot of uh, research on um, grieving the Holy Spirit. And you know what it boils down to more than anything? Is our flesh saying, I have a right to my tongue. I'm not even going to ask how many people in here think that they have a right to say whatever they want to say and feel justified in doing so. Because we don't. We don't. I used to think that in a conversation, before somebody was able to even finish their, their sentence, I was jumping on first base and second base of the sentence they were trying to end with because my input in this conversation was way more important than yours, right? How many of us can relate to that? We don't even notice it, and I notice it now more than ever. And if I just sit and stare with you, if you're sharing with me, my mouth is shut because I got slapped by the Holy Spirit more than once. Shut your mouth and listen to what they have to say. Every word, every single word of what they have to say, and then bless them. Encourage them. So I want you to stop. I'm, I, 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 and I'm, I'm not saying this in a self-righteous way because I have yet to attain the stifling the tongue. Believe it or not, was nobody really saying. Uh, sometimes I spout off. Can I be open with you? Some things, some things just get under your skin just like now. And you say things that you regret. It all boils back to, I'm going to get into Scripture that proves this and backs it up. It grieves the Holy Spirit that our tongue is loose. And we feel like we're justified in stabbing and knifing and correcting everybody that we run into. And that what we have to say is more important than what you have to say. And how spiritually wrong that is. So are you ready? We're not going to finish this. We're just going to get started. The Lord's like, I said, 1130-ish? And it's 1122. But can I get started anyway? Because I can't wait to get into this study. And, and I want you to feel the same way because how many of us are guilty of my, what I have to say is more important than what you have to say? Have you ever had somebody just cut you off, just cut you off before you even finish, and you're like, did, did, did. I don't want to be that way. I don't ever want to be that way. But it's going to take work from the Holy Spirit because we just get excited about stuff we're passionate about. You shot a deer. Hey, I shot one a lot bigger. Shut up and let me tell my story before. <laughs> Yours pales in comparison to the one that I shot. Show me pictures later, but I want to show you the one. Have you looked at the dress that I bought today? I don't wear dresses, okay? So this is... That was a poor start. That was a really poor start to that. Um, a woman that would say, how's that? That's better. I really like what you have on, but have you seen what I'm toting? I know you think yours is great, and I'm not going to say it, but How about listen to somebody say, I'm so excited, never really been able to afford this, but I've I splurged and I've got it. What do you think? I think it's wonderful. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And you look stunning in it. It's never been about us. God gave us a mission, and that's to present the gospel to all nations, not to present us to all nations. It's all about Him. So we're going to start this study next week, but I've got a little commentary that I want to read, and then a scripture, and then we're going to dive into this. Are you ready for this? I hope there's more than three or four that show up next week. 
Well, next week's the Christmas program. I don't know if there'll be time anyway. Anyway, it's on the agenda, and I'm going to add two more and more and more. How many of you have heard of John Calvin? Amazing. I mean, he writes stuff, and you just you got to read it and read it again and read it again. It's like that. It's so incredibly spiritually deep. How is that even possible? There's a reason for that. How do we honor the Holy Spirit with our lives? John Calvin writes, no language, listen to this, can adequately express the solemn truth that the Holy Spirit rejoices and is glad on our account. When we are obedient to Him in all things and neither speak nor think anything but what is pure and holy, and on the other hand is grieved when we allow anything into our minds that is unworthy of our calling. How deep is that? That we allow. Not randomly. Our calling. We talk about it every week. The giftings and the calling of God, they're without repentance, and everybody has a ministry. Am I correct? Find some scriptures that would would contest what I just told you, but all of us are, are given a ministry and a gifting that we can't deny, and we allow our mouth to grieve the Holy Spirit and allow things to cover up the calling that He's placed on our life. And it falls back to grieving the Holy Spirit. I don't want to. And neither do you. I'm going to read this scripture. 1126. I just want to fellowship with you today. I just love walking around and talking with you guys. I love this group. And and for those of you that are new at C3, we love people. We love God more than you. And that shouldn't hurt your feelings. We love God and we love people. Amen. And find a home. Find a home. Okay, let's read the scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 30 through 32. Verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. I want to, we'll stop right there. When, when we gave our give our life to Christ and He forgiveness of our sins and we invite Him into our heart, the Holy Spirit comes in also. You can't, you can't get rid of the Godhead. The, the three are in one, and, and when you accept one, you accept the other. There's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's, gift in, there's all kinds of things, but the Holy Spirit seals the deal. When we accept Jesus into our, into our lives, Father, forgive me of my sins. I want to live forever with You. Be Lord of my life. The Holy Spirit, it says, seals the deal. You're saved and you're not ever going to be ripped out of my hands by any devil in hell. You're mine. You got that? Devil's a liar. Devil's a liar. By whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And how many of us can't wait for that day of redemption with that eastern sky part? Woo! There's an excitement in my spirit here lately. It could have something to do with Israeli conquest and what has happened in the massacres, unjustly demonic presence in the Middle East. God's tired of it. He's just tired of it. And His Word's plain. When it comes time, the enemy will be destroyed. Not a fight. He will be destroyed with a spoken word. I'm done with you. Be gone and cast into the lake of fire. All right. I get carried away here. 31. This has, okay, falling back to verse 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. How do we grieve the Holy Spirit? 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. 
well, Father, most of that's from the tongue, and I have a right to free speech so I can say what I want to people. They should understand that this is a country that we can say what we want, and if they get offended, it's their fault. Am I correct, God? We don't have the right. You see, because if we damage somebody with our tongue, we will be held responsible, and especially so if they die and go to hell with a, a seed that you planted in their heart of bitterness, resentment, malice. Who planted that seed? With our tongues, we planted that seed. Ouch. Ouch. Verse 32. And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. We've got some real rascals in this house, and I know that. And I was a real rascal myself. And I understand, just because I was a preacher's kid, that I could die and go to hell, just like everybody else. Did I stop and say, okay, God, I've had enough? Not initially, no. Because all of us think that we can just do whatever and then come and bow our knee before God and everything's done and then just go back and do the same thing again. The road to sanctification is not a road to a point and then back up. A road to sanctification is to this level, to this level of holiness, more and more and more of God in our lives. Till we come to a place that we can actually stand in our calling with confidence. The thing that He gave us as a gift, we stand in that gifting with confidence, knowing that He's behind us. He's behind us. Bitterness, a combined feeling of anger, disappointment, and unhappiness. Wrath, extreme anger or hostility. How many of us are eaten up with anger? It's a lie. I used to be. Laura will tell you today, is Ron the same guy that you married? Absolutely not. And if it had been for the grace of God, she would have stabbed me in my sleep and walked away. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I may have overspoken. Maybe a cast iron skillet. That'd be, that'd be better. She had so much to put up with, with, with me. And I thank God that it wasn't about me. I, there's not enough good in me to offer you anything, God, but my heart is yours. My heart is yours. Bitterness, wrath, anger. This relate to anybody in this house. Clamor, evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice. Malice, a desire to inflict injury, harm, and suffering from another. You know all my, my stories and, and how God has just saved me from not losing job after job after job and not actually going to prison. The things that I did with through anger and just thank you, God, that one day I listened. I can't do this anymore. Laura would say, look, I'm done. I'm not going to leave you, but, but I'm, I'm done physically, emotionally, spiritually. I, I can't carry you anymore. I can't do it. She said, you're going to die or go to prison. And I don't want either one of those. Was I grieving the Holy Spirit with everything in my fibrous being, this physical body? I was existing and grieving the Holy Spirit because there was a calling on my life that I refused to accept. But God. Clamor. How many of us are vocally noisy? You ever met somebody who's just like... Well, let me add to... I, I agree with you totally, but... Ever been there? Is that you? Is that us? I'm challenging you, and then we're going to dismiss. I challenge you to sit and listen to a conversation expecting to add nothing to it. 
I challenge you as your pastor this next week, when we talk next week, that you sat and listened to 10 different conversations and never had anything to add to that conversation except when asked. Man, is that possible? My deer is bigger than your deer. My kids' deers are always bigger than mine, so that's really not even a deal. (laughs) My grandkids' deer are bigger than mine. I'm just going to start a pity party. Okay, I challenge this side, and you guys heard the challenge. How about we just shut up the tongue, and we listen to lives that are hurting, scrambling for help, that needs somebody just to listen, and when it comes time to encourage. Let me tell you something. You're in a lot of pain, but I know a God who can fix you.